Okay, we're right. back. We're back. Law 46 from the 48 Laws of Power. And today, um, Law 46 is never appear too perfect. <laughs> um, appearing better than others is always dangerous. But most dangerous of all is to appear to have no faults or weaknesses. Envy creates silent enemies. It is smart to occasionally display defects and admit to harmless vices in order to deflect envy and appear more human and approachable. Only gods and the dead can seem perfect with impunity. And that's Law 46 from the 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. Never appear too perfect. Well, I'm far from perfect. <laughs> we all are. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I was thinking, where, ha where where have I seen this take place? Because Robert Greene gives examples of some, a couple that, you know, one person appeared to have everything going perfect for them, and it created a lot of envy. And so um, it was hard to think of some situation like that. Have you experienced anything um, like this, where you've seen maybe somebody create a lot of envy towards someone? Well, I think that in the business world that we move ourselves in, when people are succeeding, you know, and I mean talking about exponential growth and success, probably the competition has some envy. It's difficult not to, to a certain extent, because they'll think, why didn't I think of that? If you, you know, a lot of times ideas, okay, are what imp move businesses forward, okay? But implementing those ideas, executing those ideas, yeah. are what makes the difference between the guy that succeeds and the guy that doesn't, or the lady that succeeds and the lady that does not. And so if you, would, if you had a similar idea, but you didn't implement it, you didn't execute on it, somebody else did it, Okay, then you might say to yourself, oh, my God, if I would have done that, look how easy it is for this guy or look at it. So, yes, succeeding, okay, creates envy. Mm. Even um, having a family life with a good wife, children, or a good husband and children, and, you know, some people that are not having it easy, or are going through struggles, or maybe even contemplating a divorce, mm. might have a certain degree of envy because, you know, you've married a good husband, you've got kids. You know, it it's part of human nature. Yeah. I don't think you can stop the development of those thoughts, but what you can do is control them. And be aware that they exist. Right. Because, for example, you know, there are so many people that have children and there are so many that do not. And sometimes those that do not are struggling and going through all kinds of medical procedures and so forth to try to have children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the coin, you see people that have children and you hear about these things that were they leave a child in a car and they go grocery shopping for an hour or, you know, they leave a child unattended. And some of these folks that are trying to have children but can't, would they can't understand that kind of stuff. And so they might say, have a little bit of envy because look, they had a child and it wasn't so hard for them. Look how much we're struggling and we want a baby. And then they think about adoption. That's the only thing I could, that's what I'm bringing up right now. Yeah. And so it's not, oh, sorry. it's not that it makes you bad to think about those things. What you need to do is control those thoughts. And in the book, it says, if you turn envy inwards, it will destroy your soul. But on the other hand, if you take envy and you turn it outward, yeah. and 
you realize, like you said, be aware that you have it, then you work on it and you realize that nobody's perfect and you got to move on with the hand, the cards that you've been dealt in your life. Yeah, use it as fuel. Use it as fuel, exactly. I um I have had that, because like you said, we all feel it, jealousy, envy, which by the way, let me pull up the definitions because I looked it up. I just, because I was curious, what's the difference between jealousy and envy? We okay. kind of use them okay. interchangeably. All right. Um, according to languagetool.org, Although many people consider envy and jealousy synonyms, they actually have distinct meanings. Envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has, like attributes or possessions. Okay. If you're jealous, you feel threatened, protective, or fearful of losing one's position or situation to someone else. That was one definition of it. Another one is... Uh, envy is a feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. And then jealous, uh, feeling or showing envy of someone or their achievements and advantages. You know, they go hand in hand. Very, very similar. Um, this other one is saying, the last one is, jealousy is a feeling that has to do with something that you have, this thing or attribute being threatened by a third party so i think of like you're in a relationship and you see your partner speaking to somebody else and you feel jealous because that attention is now going towards you uh and envy would be a feeling that occurs when you don't have something that another person has i'm envious you have that perfect partner that perfect husband that perfect wife you know that perfect life those are the those are the differences. So envy is wanting something you don't have. So this is what Robert Greene's talking about. Um, and on social media, I think it's a big problem because we showcase most of the time only the good things. So it creates like a false sense of like, oh, everything's going really well in this person's life. Not everybody, right? But most people show the good things going on. And so it creates a lot of envy. I it, agree. It can create a lot of envy. It's not real life. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, what is the two words we're always comparing you and I? Manipulation versus... Persuasion. Persuasion. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they go hand in hand. One thing that I thought of with this law, which is, uh, again, never appear too perfect... You know who I thought of? Because I was thinking, where have I seen something like this in my life? Well, the first person that came to mind was the story of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And the second person that I thought, which is living today and kind of falls into this idea of like almost a perfect person, uh, is Joel, Ols Joel, Joel Osteen. Mm. He's far from perfect. He's far from perfect, <laughs> but, but he, the life that he's portraying is like perfect family, perfect everything. Uh, and at least that's from the outside, right? I haven't been to his church or anything like that. But I was Googling him and I was looking up a few different articles and there's a lot of, I think, envy out there because he's coming off as like, he's extremely wealthy. And so people are saying, hey, you're preaching, you know, that gets complicated because you're preaching the word of God, but you're, uh, taking a ton of money, live in luxury. Well, that's envy. That's that's envy, but also he's portraying, I think, a, himself as perfect almost. Really? I mean, at least from the outside, it looks that way. You know, I way. used to follow him quite yeah. a bit. I've read a couple of his books too. Uh, and then for some reason, I... I don't know if I got uh, manipulated by the media because there was a lot of negativity. Uh, Towards the church because of all the written, money they were making and all. Right. That. Um, but I think that the best route is to say, look, if, if he has money and he's made money, good for him. As, as long as, you know, you make it according to our rules and laws, right? I mean, you're not... Yeah. 
killing anybody or hurting anybody or anything like that. You're doing it through business. He's doing it through a congregational thing. Um, but you can do it too. Right. You just need to put the time and effort that he has and energy that he has put into it. And Correct. when I say him, I say anybody that has made money. Like, for example, you and I have seen the rise very clearly of uh, PHP, you know, Patrick but David, and or PBD. And um, I'm sure he has a lot of people that are envious of him, but he struggled and he went But he a... doesn't portray as somebody as perfect. That's I brought right. up Joel Olstein okay, because right. he's preaching God. Okay. And then this, I, I mean, if you look him up, everything's like perfect. The hair's perfect. <laughs> the pictures are, the, the suit, the tie, everything is like, it seems that even the house, when they show this huge estate or whatever the case is, everything looks perfect. That's why I brought him up. Because, okay, yeah, there well, are... He's creating a great deal of envy according to the 48 Laws of Power, Law 46. I think so. I think that's why maybe there's a lot of people that envy him that maybe you know hates a strong word but no they're going after him because because you you're you look perfect envy and hate you know they're there because you're a skip and a hop away from their cousins like we say i would say yeah yeah because uh, you know but then again you know where does envy come from? Okay, you're looking at the guy. He's got a lot more stuff than you do. And it's uh, material things. and Or he's got a perfect marriage and a perfect wife. Uh, you know, uh, looks beautiful, whatever. Right? And that creates envy. Mm -hmm. But does that... The soil where you put your seed to grow, okay? I think it's insecurity. It comes from a place of insecurity because nice. you can do it too. Now, my understanding is that his father was a preacher too, so he was born into that. Yeah. And that's why he's able to preach the word of God to, let's say, such perfection or, you know, in the best way possible. He's been previewed to uh, reading and studying the Bible since he was a kid, so he knows it like the back of his hand and so he can quote it and the verses and all that. I can't do that, yeah. right? He can. And that's why he's leading a congregation. And he's filling people with hope and, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm just... You can do it too if right. you put your mind and effort and heart into it, you know, uh, but it's difficult. Yeah, and uh, and some people don't believe they can do it too. And they believe that some people were born with certain privileges that they don't have. And so... Um, I don't know that they that they can overcome that, and maybe some of that is true. You know, uh, if you're born in a in a third world country and you don't have the same abilities and access to things that, let's say, somebody born here does in the United States in a better environment, then those are realities that people face. So maybe they don't think they can actually attain that. You know, so I think that what what you know, I, I agree with you, and there's a lot of people that are going through a lot of struggles. I, yeah, but I stopped you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, what I think that's really interesting about this, because I do think it's natural for us to have jealousy, envy. As a little kid, you see it. You know, the little kids are playing, and you see they want the toy that the other person has. The other kid. <laughs> that's just. That's, I do see that. That's jealousy, because. Or they want the attention that's now being given to somebody else. That's jealousy. Um, but what Robert Greene is saying, look, these things are going to happen, especially when you get that promotion, when you come up really quick. So dampen it. One of the things that... That's very important. One of the things that you can do to dampen it is to say, I'm very lucky. Because if you come out and you say, well, I worked really hard and I've been at this for this long and this and that. And that's why I got that promotion. I made my connections and this and that. 
instead of saying, you know what, I just got really lucky. <laughs> but, but you know what? That's why I think this book gets a bad rap because these are things that I think actually work, and it is very manipulative because you're intentionally trying to, let's say, dampen these the feelings that other people may have on your success and so that can get to be manipulative um but that's what i was getting to is that um yeah dampen your brilliance occasionally or attribute your success to luck that's a quote from the book <laughs> uh one of the things that causes the most envy according to robert green is uh, natural abilities, whether you're very good looking, extremely athletic, something that is a natural ability, because that isn't attainable to everybody. Money is, if you believe that I can work hard and I can succeed and I can grow a business, I can make money. So uh, that's okay. But if you're an extremely good looking person, and you're getting all the attention or extremely, let's say, athletic, and you have a lot of opportunities that come your way because of that, right? Or extremely gifted. Like I remember there was this uh, buddy that I went to school with that he did not need to study and he would get A's. <laughs> so I would, for me, I was like, it, you know, How do you do it? Yeah, he was my buddy, but it, it bothered me because I had to work. I had to study. And these were hard classes. I wasn't getting A's in them, and he was not studying, and he would just listen to the lecture. So those are natural gifts. That can create envy. For and, sure. And so I think what Robert Greene's saying is be aware that this is happening and use these mechanisms, these tactics, so that people don't continue to fester that envy and turns into hate. And eventually, they will try to destroy you and the power that you've gained. You know, it's such a... Look, if you go to the core of the law, it says never appear too perfect. Never appear too perfect. Okay. As I just read that superficially, I say to myself, that's easy to do because I know I'm far from perfect. And nobody's perfect, you know? Nobody is, even though they may appear to be, right? Because you know, you know better. You have experience. Well, but when you look at certain people and they have certain things, it, I think it's get attributed up, no, all over the place, whether it's material or a good family or health, you know? Um, athletic, so forth. If you're not careful, you do create envy and you do create enemies. And yeah. it says, you know, like it says, if inward, if envy is turned inward, it poisons the soul. Phew. Okay. And so you turn that inward and like you say, you create an enemy and they, they'll try to take you down for sure. Yeah. Okay. They'll try to hurt you. And you see it all the time in all these movies on Netflix and stuff like that. The girl falls in love with one guy and the other guy that was left on the sideline, it's really upset about it. And so he ends up taking out the guy she fell in love with. It happens all the time, yeah. right? So you have to be very, very careful um, how you maneuver yourself through life. Yes. In the process of damping it, mm. you got to be careful. Yeah. Because you're impeding yourself from potentially having that positive mind frame to just create a lot of new things in this world. For example, if you look at Elon Musk, right? Would you say he has a privileged brain? <laughs> you know, he's been gifted by, he's been touched by the hand of God with intelligence, okay? This is a guy that when he wanted to build his rocket launchers, he went to the Russians and they were going to sell it to him for a huge amount of money. And he said, forget it. And he went to the books and he went to some professor 
uh, I don't know if it was Harvard or not, you guys look it up, but he went to some professor and the professor said, if you read these books, you'll be able to create your own rocket launch. <laughs> and he read them and did it to the amazement of that particular professor. Okay. Now, I don't know a lot of people that can do that. I certainly don't think I would be able to do it. And you know the old saying, if you don't think you can do it, you're right. You won't be able to do it. I don't see Elon Musk as perfect. And no, but, so, but he's got a privileged brain. Do you think there's other scientists out there? Because that's your point of view. You're not competing with him in the brilliance area. But do you think if there are other scientists out there that they say, how does he get it so perfect? Uh, I mean, how does he, how's he able to do that? I, don't know. I can't read that book and understand it. Yeah, that's a natural gift that can, I'm sure, create envy, yeah. For sure. But uh, but in terms of the individual, I think no, he's that not perfect. he does a lot of things that make people think, oh, he's not perfect. Like even, maybe it wasn't even intentional when he went on Joe Rogan and smoked, he smoked weed on Joe Rogan. Well, I wish he hadn't done that because the Tesla stock dumped after that. It, maybe maybe it was it. intentional. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But he, because that could be a way to just dampen the attention. Hey, I'm a lucky guy, blah, 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 whatever. But but I bet you he's got envy in the scientific world with some maybe. of these scientists yeah. that... I could see are, that. You know, like, for example, what was the name of that movie where but, the professor puts out a problem out in the hallway? Yeah. Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a there's a part in that movie. Is that Matt Damon? Yes. Matt Damon. Ben Affleck. And Ben Affleck. So Matt Damon is talking to the professor. And Robin he, Williams. No, no. Right. The other scientist that that the teacher. Oh, with the, it, oh, there, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a portion in that movie. You guys, uh, if you want to see, that's an excellent movie. Yeah. He's talking to the professor and the professor is. It's got a problem that he put on the board and Matt Damon does it like in two minutes. And the professor said, how'd you do it? How'd you get? And then Matt Damon explodes and says, do you see how ridiculous this is where you're struggling to figure this thing out and it's going to take you weeks when I could do it in a couple of minutes? And I think that's the part where he says, well, how do you do it? And Matt Damon says, I don't know. I don't know. It just comes to me. So he's frustrated too mm. by his brilliance. Yeah. There's a point in time where he gets frustrated by his own brilliance and says, I just don't know. Or yeah. something like that. And the professor realizes, oh my God. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have people like that. You have people like that. Um, you know, for us mortals... <laughs> Normal well, ones. Well, those are gifted, like you say, gifted, gifted. people, They're like totally uh, gifted. like the skill of Messi. But then you also look at Lionel Messi, who has practiced his whole life and was born into this environment to become the best player in the world, or one of them. So I think it's a combination. Um, but if you just say that you're touched by God, then that, to a certain way, takes some of the credit away from you. Well, you're still going to have a ton of envy. For oh, yeah. example, oh, his yeah. teacher in Goodwill Hunting, he envied him. And I think there's a part of the movie where he actually says, I just envy your powers of deduction. <laughs> and, you know, how do you stop it? And he, this is a, a because you said, what did you say about me? You have experience or whatever. Yeah, because you, you could, can take it and throw it out the door. But you could like when you see, for example, in a business environment, I've seen people that every day their shirt is perfectly ironed. The tie is perfect. Uh, they portray themselves very righteous. And so they, they're they giving off this illusion that I'm perfect. And that's, I don't think, a good thing. And Robert Greene saying it's not a good thing. You know, everything is, the hair, everything is perfect. So that's, the type of individual that can, I think people can become envious of that person because they think that they are maybe, <laughs> they're, or at least they're portraying themselves as being perfect. But, um, you know, I've also been in different settings where because I turned something away, whether it was a drink or something like that, 
people can be like, oh, you think you're too good kind of thing. I've gotten that feeling from people because I've said, no, I'm not. I'm good. So you really have to be careful your environment. What Robert Greene is saying is that you need to flee these uh, people. That's right. You need to flee them. That's right. You can try and live amongst them because you do need uh, to have power. You need a strong base of supporters. Uh, and that's where the dampening and, hey, I'm just a lucky guy and all these things come about because you're not fleeing it. You still need those people like in a work environment. But eventually, if you're not careful, they will they will destroy you. They'll take you down because of envy. Yeah, you just need to be careful. I think humility will play an important part in a person maneuvering through this road of, you know, never appear to be too perfect. Yeah. Humility. I agree. Um, I have a great, great deal of respect for Mike Tyson. And that respect has grown over the years. When I was younger, I looked at him as a fighter and, okay, he's, you know, the heavyweight champion of the world. I gave him credit for that achievement, okay? But I didn't think much more of him in other areas. Now I think the man has um, wisdom beyond many of us. And he was on a podcast and they said, hey, when people talk and say this and this and this, about you does it bother you and his answer was brilliant he said uh when i think that i'm important it does but when i realize immediately that i'm not important no it doesn't bother me <laughs> and that thing i've heard years ago and it stuck with me for a long time and forever yeah. because you know he says look when i think i'm big shot mike tyson heavyweight champion of the world and I had the world in my hands and I knocked down the I knocked out the most fearsome and strongest man in the world um yeah then it, it affects bothers him. me yeah but when I realize that I'm not important at all you know that, humble yeah humility I think plays a part in maneuvering this yeah and you got to be aware um when you excel in something of your surroundings, who's watching you, who was gunning for your position, who you just displaced. Yeah. Because that person can potentially come back and really do some damage for you. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, if you dampen your growth, are you messing around with your psychic? Well, are that's you... one thing we talk about that what you say you <laughs> what you say you start to believe and so you that could be something you have to be aware of will that impede you from doing things that could you know safeguard the world and do all kinds of beneficial things for the world because you're trying to you're worried about who's envy around you and stuff like that well that's uh, a good point Andrew Tate would say Forget about the yeah the haters. Naysayers. Just do the best you can, and if somebody is envy, but he's the heck with them. his uh, his approach is he's not coming off as trying to be he's not coming off as perfect, but also he's kind of like I don't need any of you. He's kind of like I'm out of this game that you guys play. Well, that's what he's trying to do. I think then I at think. some point. There may be something to that, Mike. Yeah. I've maybe. heard that say uh, to a lot of people. Joe yeah. Rogan said that uh, they were uh, attacking Jordan Peterson so much. Yeah. So much, so much. They could have destroyed him, but he already had gotten, what do you call that speed? Yeah, escape velocity. Escape velocity. But I'm talking about your day-to-day -day experience with people. Not everybody is has gotten to the point of a Peterson or where they have already a following, right? You're at work, or you're amongst friends, or you're in uh, in an organization. You you can't just be like forget all of you, no, like you these can't. guys are doing. No, because, some of these guys. Right. So it because uh, Rogan talks about it's called it's called blank you money. Once you have blank you money, then uh, 
you're good. You don't care. You don't care. But let's talk about most people in our situation, my situation. Um, you you will you have to be careful of these things. You, you you're not just telling people. I mean, maybe some people say, "Hey, I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna live the way I want to live." Well, Robert Green says that's a cop out. If you're going by the loss, now excessive praise is likely envy. And also somebody who's talking constantly bad about you is likely envy. Um, it reminds me of excessive praise, el hombre agaricia el caballo pa montar, which is Facundo Cabral, which is the the man uh, pets, pets the, the horse. Uh, yeah, pets the horse or touches the horse In order. to be able to ride the horse. Right. And that's what a praise is. They're petting you. <laughs> Um, because they're about to bribe you. Um, you must flee envy. Now, he also brought up that there are that those who create envy are as guilty as those who feel it. Those who create envy, that there's two types of people that do this. One of them is the person that every time they make an achievement, they're letting everybody know. That that's creates envy. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, every time. You accomplish something. Oh, I'm going to let the everybody know. That creates envy. They're just as guilty as those who they're stirring up, uh, who are stirring, who are starting to get the feeling of envy towards you. You're just as guilty because of the way that you're acting. So it kind of puts it back on you. And then there's the other type of person that subconsciously they don't realize they're doing subtle things that are stirring up envy in other people. Right. And those are the two types of people. But that's dangerous. <clears throat> yeah, if you don't even know it. But then there's the person that, hey, I just got a new car. I just got this. And then if you're not careful with the type of people that you're around, you know, I just got this, you know, um, fancy whatever. Right. Watch, fancy Watch, this. Whatever. Or, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I went to a, a family gathering or I went to a party that somebody invited me to. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was offered a drink by the host just because he was being nice, you know, uh, three or four times throughout my stay there. Yeah. And I... I didn't want to drink. I wanted just to have water. And I said, no, thank you very much. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You know, have a glass of wine or have a beer. And I said, you know what? Maybe a little bit later. Thank you very much. I'm I'm really good right now with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just reminds me, um, you're going to come back. They're going to come back at you, come back at you, come back at you. And you just need to be strong in your, in your core, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, it can create an issue because you tell the guy so many times, no, thank you, no, thank you. Could it bother the man? Would, you it know, depends the person. It depends on the person. And but the also the way that you say no, thank you is also, I think, very important. It is. Um, you don't want to offend people. I actually this morning saw this post from Robert Greene, uh, which was on the 48 Loss of Power. It says, power is a game. And in games, you don't, you do not judge your opponents by their intentions, but by the effects of their actions. Wow. Yeah, because some person may be saying something, but their actions prove that they're, you know, doing something else. Or they right? may be feeling something. Right. Oh, my intentions weren't to hurt your oh. feelings. That was not my intention. I didn't mean to run you over. That's that... why I think the laws of human nature <laughs> are so important. That may be our next book. We have several subscribers saying, hey, go for the laws of human nature. Yeah. Because yeah. he's saying, look, be careful who you, like, let's say you got that promotion. And you tell someone that you believe is your friend. And what he's saying is, for a millisecond, you might see you know, in their eyes, a bit of disappointment. And that's who they really are. You told them, hey, I got this promotion, this and that and whatever. Or 
the flip side. Right. He says again, what if something bad happens to you? And you come and you tell your friend. And for a millisecond, you might see a like a smile or a, a small a smirk. Crack, a smirk. Yeah. It's like, I'm glad that. A little grin. Yeah. You know, and you believe this person is your friend and you, you tell them something they, bad happened to you. And huh? Can you imagine they just have a twitch or something? And now you think that they're... <laughs> but see, Robert Green says it's it's human nature. Yeah. yeah. And you need to know how to deal with it. That's why I think the part of humility is going to be able to guide you uh, in this road. Mm-hmm. But then you got you have the people that excel, like, uh, for example, do you think that Dan Pena has any humility in him? Or do you think that, um, <laughs> what's the guy that I say he's always abrasive? Um, Cardone. Cardone has any humility in him? Or uh, Andrew Tate, you know? These guys, what? They have broken, what is that speed again? Uh, take Escape off? velocity. Escape velocity. But you're not talking know. about those, right? And I know they're not. Was... Yeah, they're not our, your day to day encounters. Right, right. The people that we're encountering day to day, negotiating with, doing business with, trying to establish connections with, relationships, those are the people I think um, that I don't know about these other people because you only see one side of them. You, you, you've never met them in person. Uh, so it's kind of hard to judge based right. on that because sometimes you like it's like i've seen somebody in a lot of pictures and then i finally see them in person it's like wow they're very different you know and that's just the way you look it's like it's very different because you don't have all the lighting and this and that <laughs> you know you it's different not bad not good it's just different and so I think the same thing goes with what we portray. We all choose what we put out to the world, whether it's on social media or the mask that you wear when you go out in public. And, um, you know, I, I, but I really like that, that we're, ju we're judged by the effects of our actions, not by our intentions. This is, I mean, maybe in a family setting, it's a little different because it's family, maybe. Wouldn't you say, well, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let me put you on the spot real quick. Ready? Wouldn't you say that your intentions guide your actions if you're true to yourself? You can unintentionally commit a certain action. So I'm coming from your intentions would guide your actions. If your intentions are noble. If you're true to your intentions. Your your actions yeah. will reflect it. Yeah. Like, I like you, so I'm going to go and spend more time with you. So the person that in their core is not being genuine is saying one thing and their actions are doing another. You Well, no. Uh, I'll give you an example. Okay. Have you ever uh, gotten in a car accident? Yeah. Okay. That was not intentional. Yet your actions led to you getting in a car accident. So there are things in life that, and even there's unintended consequences of certain actions. So we did not expect this thing to happen, but based on the actions that we that we put out, these this is what ended up happen happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm okay. answering your question, but right. I think that sometimes we unintentionally um, get certain results. If we're true to our intentions, then and we're genuine with people, then those would the those would be the actions that we give out, right? Genuine actions. But sometimes we do something. Um, with good intentions, but and it backfired. Yeah, yeah, those are not. But I don't know if that's the same thing you're asking me. Maybe it's not. <laughs> well, you know, these are <laughs> these are the laws of power. Okay, yeah. and you always remind me. Let's get back to the law because I get sidetracked a lot. Because 
we try to give our experiences as not only have we lived the laws, but what we've come across in the businesses that we have, right? So you always tell me, yeah, but this is these are power moves. You have to remember these are power moves. And when you say this book gets a bad rap, what exactly do you mean? Say it again for the. Well, I'm referring to what this particular law is all about manipulation. <laughs> you're saying don't appear too perfect, so you're gonna try and cloak certain things and try and put a little bit of smoke and you this is not being a genuine person this is not really being who you are you're you're dampening and the reason for that is because you are potentially afraid of envy right that that which in the poisons end is the soul yeah that in the end could take your it could threaten your power okay right because this is about power so What's the message to our subscribers and our viewers? From my from, from my point is know when you're in an environment that there are people who are envious of you. Okay. Whether it's for your natural abilities or your At successes. Work or because of your family. Yeah. And for me it's and understand that and play the game. Play the game because dampen it. Whatever you have to do to um survive okay to live another day okay and move your family forward all right until you can escape let's say Have escape velocity until you can break free but while you're in that environment in that organization you got to find a way to swim with the sharks okay that's what my buddy and i always say swim okay. with the sharks and then what i would say for our viewers okay mm -hmm. and for myself is the other side of the coin is, what if I'm feeling the envy? Yes. What if I feel the envy because somebody did better in business, or if I feel the envy because they have a better family than I do, or if I feel the envy because they have children and I can't. Turn that energy. Turn into that fuel. energy outward. That's what they're saying. I, I, I think Turn that right. energy outward. Be aware that you're feeling this. And instead of holding it in, Yes. And letting it poison your soul, like the book says that it will do. Yeah. Okay. It will take you to a very dark place. Turn that outward and say to yourself, how can I improve my life? Maybe I can't have this, but can I shoot for it? And I fall a little short, but in the process of this, because as long as you're trying to work to improve yourself, you know to, yeah to use that energy use like that energy in a, like a, a try positive to, way a positive direction try to figure out how you can potentially create a positive situation yeah because otherwise it's going to eat you up a lot yeah like in martial arts in certain martial arts you're using the other person's force and energy, energy. Mm -hmm. and, give, and giving it back out <laughs> you're trying to the flow you do the same thing if you're getting these feelings use those feelings as some sort of yeah. energy to and maybe eventually you'll break out of that yeah but i do think like you said at the beginning this is just a natural thing that human nature human nature we're back to the laws of human nature I know, I know. it's just who it's what we are you know <clears throat> um but, but if, if you, you can become, become aware of it then you can deal with it you can say oh wow am i feeling what was the word uh, jealous jealous am i feeling right. jealous am i feeling envious and how and if indeed i feel that i am yeah i don't like that quality in me i yeah. need to change that somehow how can i potentially change that that's not a quality that i want to be uh, known for if you're spending your day on social media looking at the successes of other people you're probably going to have a lot of these feelings get off of it to a certain degree no when you know when should i be on here should i be following these people whatever the case um lastly and anything else you want to throw in we can wrap it up but mm -hmm. there i really think it's important to know when not to be living by this law because 
I think it's important to be a genuine person and have humility and be true to who you are. Because if you start living like this, you know, Jordan Peterson says that you become that, you know, you can't fake, uh, he, he was talking about, you can't, uh, if you need to write an essay a certain way to pass the oh, class yeah. because the professor wants you to write it a certain way, um, get the fail, but write it the way you would write it. Get the F. Because if you actually <laughs> write it the way the professor wants you, you have to be really careful with well, that. Because you're going to be, you you're going to begin to change. Away. Well, yeah, you won't get that degree, but you're going to begin to change who you actually are. Right. And that's dangerous because if you're living by these laws, does it change who you actually are? I think it does. I, I think, think it does. does. Oh, oh, for sure. sure. Yeah. The, the book warned you in, in the, the beginning. beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Before, Before you read this book, let me tell you, you're, you're never going to be the same again. again. So, so be careful, make a decision. Do you really want to read this book? I don't have a look. When you start, when you look at a, this is the last thing. When you look at some, never appear to be too perfect. When you look at that sentence and you start digging deep and deep, and the deeper you go, sometimes it, the worse it gets. So if you stay a little superficial on it and you say, never appear to be too perfect, I'll tell you what my take is. I don't have a problem with it. I'm so far from perfection in every aspect of many issues, you know? I'm, you know, if you look at yourself and you say, you know what, I run, I don't run fat, I, I fast, I'm fat, you know, I'm short, I'm, uh, I'm so far from perfection. I don't have a problem with this law. Yeah. You know, just don't get too deep into it because, or, you know, if you wish to do so, you know, attend to the consequences. But I mean, it's so easy. I'm so far from perfe perfection in every aspect of so many things that, yeah, but but I you're coming from a it. place of um, you uh, very you have what's the word? You're not insecure. What's what's the opposite of not being insecure? You're secure. very confident in yourself. Okay, secure in yourself, and the person that yeah, I really, really don't, don't care what. Right, but some people, people aren't. Think. Some people are insecure. Right, right, right. right. The yeah, that's a great. That's a good like point. no one okay. liked the teacher's pet. The teacher's pet in class was trying to be perfect. Telling on other kids, <laughs> don't be that person in life. Right. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. We'll I wrap think it up. This was good. Yeah. This was um law. So we have two, uh, laws? two laws left to complete this series, and we're excited for the next series. Let's this see has been fun, and our, the channel we're almost at a thousand subscribers, which, which is, is great. great. <laughs> All right. Thank you.